In last video, we built a Python Flask server, which is going to be used as a backend for our website. Let's build that website in this video. We already have these three folders where server folder contains our server, the model folder contains the model in the Jupyter notebook that we built. And the client folder is empty. Here we are going to build our website or our UI. It is going to be a simple HTML, CSS, JavaScript website, okay? So I'm going to create three files here and let's call them app.html and app.css and the third one is app.js. In any simple web application, you will have three files. HTML will contain the structure of your UI, your elements, your anatomy of the application. CSS is a cascaded style sheet. It will contain the style sheet, like the color, look and feel of the application. JavaScript will contain the dynamic code, which will make HTTP calls to our backend, retrieve the data. So this is more of a server communicator. You know, it communicates with server, gets you the data and runs any dynamic code. If you don't know the fundamentals of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then you should go and find some other online resources and get those fundamentals clear. You need just basic understanding of these three concepts in order to continue this tutorial, okay? As I have these three simple blank files created, I'm going to open this into Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is an editor from Microsoft. It is a very nice, fast, lightweight uh, IDE. So that's what I'm going to use for my UI code editing, okay? So I have these three files. You can see these three files are blank right now and I'm going to start with my HTML. So for HTML, I already have the HTML code ready, so I'm just going to copy paste. Okay, so what I have here is, any HTML will have two sections, one is head, another one is body. Okay, so this is my head section, where I have a title of my application, I have I'm going to use jQuery to make HTTP calls. For that, I have imported this jQuery JS file. Also, I'm going to include app.js app and app.css. This is more like, you know, in Python, you import the file. So this is similarly, we are going to include JS and CSS here. From here, my main application body starts. So in my main application, as you know, uh, from our UI mockup, we will have the area will have bhk okay area will be an input so you can say this is an input entry then you have bhk which is a button bar okay we have a bathroom option that is also a button bar and our options are one bathroom to five okay you can add more if you want to then the last one is location so location is an a drop down which we are going to dynamically populate in our JS file. All right, then we have CSS. So the CSS are all these classes. See here I'm saying class location. So this location class I need to define into my CSS file. Again, I'm copy pasting the code because this is not really an HTML and CSS tutorial. So just to save time, I'm just copying and pasting here. Okay, so here are my CSS. For example, we just looked at location uh, class. So location, if you search here, this is the class, okay? And these are all the uh, UI elements. You have background color, you have font, which kind of font you want to use on application, etc. okay? Now let's run the application. When I double click on app.html, it looks something like this. So it has a nice UI where all of our UI elements are available. And 
the locations are still hard coded because we have not written app.js file. JS file is the one which makes HTTP calls and, and gets the data from the backend. So now that our UI looks pretty much good, uh, we are going to write app.js file. So app.js file is here. So let's first include app.js file and this is how you include the app.js file. And in this, uh, first routine we are going to write is it will load the locations. You can see the location drop down has only hard coded values. These two, which we hard coded in app.html. You can see that we have these two hard coded location. Okay. But if you want to get these locations from the backend and how do you do that? So in um, JavaScript, there is this call called call on load. So you can say window dot on load is on page load function which we are going to define here. So I can write this function call on page load, which will uh, call certain routines when the page is loaded. When the HTML page is loaded, the first thing we want to do is load the locations, okay? And the way you load the locations is by writing this code. So here I'm making the same HTTP call which we tested using postman and you can use a uh, dollar this is for jquery when you say get it is making a get call to that same url which we tested using postman here so you, you see this is the url we call and we got this particular response back so the same thing in javascript here in the data, you will get that response back. And once you have the response, you want to do data.locations because you can see here we have data.location that will be the list of locations. And then you iterate through those locations one by one and add those locations into our drop down. Okay, so let's taste this code out. So here you can just refresh the page. And when you refresh the page, you can see that now this contains all the locations in Bangalore city. Once the locations are loaded, now we can implement a function for estimate price click. Okay. And on estimate price click, we have on on click event, we have this function JavaScript function, which is going to be run. So we can write that function here and that function name is on estimate price click. So what do you want to do on our estimate price click? Well, you want to get the values of all these features, area, BHK and bath, okay? So let's first get the values of these UI elements. For that, we are going to write uh, two more functions which will be get bath value and get bhk value and this is how those functions look and these functions are iterating through the button bar that we have and they are giving the value back so if uh, on your ui you have clicked let's say button number three then this particular function will return number three and similarly, get BHK will re return the BHK. So let's call these functions here in our main function. We are going to call those functions here. I get the value of SQFT, BHK, bathroom, location, etc. Okay. And my URL for the price prediction endpoint is predict home price. And the way you call it is using jQuery's a uh, post call. So this is jQuery dollar dot is a jQuery object. You are making a post call because you saw that here in predict home price function, we made a post call with all these inputs and we got this as an output. So once we make this post call in this function, we get an output back. And in the output, there is an element called estimated price. You can see estimated price here, 
which contains the price in Indian lakh rupees. So all we are doing is we are painting this EST price HTML element. Uh, so all we need to do is just refresh the page. So my page is refreshed and let's predict the price of Rajaji Nagar. So when you click on estimated price, it says that the price of this property is 2 crore 25 lakh rupees. If you have three bedroom, three bath, it will be a little more. Um, then depends on the location. Okay, so if you have a different location, let's say Nehru Nagar, the same property price is much less because Nehru Nagar, you know, Rajaji Nagar is probably a more expensive area. Okay, uh, if you have much bigger home, like the double size, then see 1000 square foot was 30 lakh. Then the 2000 square foot is 110 lakh. Okay, so our application is now ready. It is working fine uh, locally. Okay, uh, in production, if you want to deploy it, there are some sets of uh, steps and procedures that you need to follow. But uh, in a typical work environment, a data scientist goes through this process where he built model first, then the Python Flask server and the HTML application. Sometimes uh, there is a software engineering team which will be responsible for building this UI and backend application and data scientists will just build the model. That is the case in majority of the data science roles. But depending upon the your job profile or, or the company, you might also uh, build these applications so that you can at least test them. So it's important to have some uh, knowledge of uh, web development or some UI development knowledge uh, and some knowledge of uh, Python Flask server, etc. How to write, write HTTP backends, etc. Uh, if you want to be a successful data scientist. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Uh, this should have given you a very good understanding on how a data scientist working for a big firm builds an application end to end. So just to summarize, we first build our model, we did data cleaning, we did dimensionality reduction, feature engineering, model building, outlier detections, all of that. Then we moved on to writing a Python Flask server, which was serving HTTP GET and POST requests. And the third element was our UI or our website, which will make the calls to the HTTP backend and it will return the, it will get the response back. Okay, so we build the whole application end to end. I hope you enjoyed this series. And if you liked it, uh, please uh, give the thumbs up to all the videos. Please share it with your friends. Anyone who is a new data science aspirant would find this series to be very, very useful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.